Welcome to our distance worship today, the second Sunday of Lent, March 13th. Today we are reading from Luke's Gospel in chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Listen for God's word to you. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for these words from Luke's gospel that remind us of your passion in this moment already, knowing the destination of Jerusalem and what would happen there. Open our hearts to hear your word for us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Laments are expressions of sorrow for the evil and suffering that has befallen a people. Today, we are filled with laments for the suffering people of Ukraine. We lift up our prayers of lament as a way of sharing their own sorrow. It is how we here on the Mendocino coast, so far from the bombings and anguish across the seas, express our solidarity with the victims of this inexplicable evil. We lament the loss of lives in such an unjustifiable war, a war where even children's hospitals are targeted and destroyed. Laments are not just expressions of our outrage and anger over such things. They are prayers for God to act in the face of such horrors. The Bible actually is filled with words of lament. About two-thirds of the book of Psalms are classified as laments. They are prayers lifted up in the face of great evil, oppression, and suffering. There is even a book with the title of Lamentations. This world provides us with plenty of opportunity to join together in lamentation. So also do our own lives. We not only lament the great evils unleashed by power-hungry tyrants, we lament the many ways that we ourselves, in our pride, selfishness, and insecurity, bring physical or emotional harm to others. Even to those we love the most, we lament the way we have hurt our spouse or our children or our parents. We lament the ways we have dehumanized and ignored the poor of our community. Lent is, for Christians, a season of laments, expressing the sorrow we feel for our own inexplicable evil. Laments are not just dark reflections on the prevalence of evil turning us into a depressive and hopeless people. Laments are acknowledgments of all that is wrong and broken within us and within our world to a God who has joined with us in solidarity, a God who laments beside us and who does not reject us. In lament, we pray for God's intervention in our own life to save us from our selfish acts and prideful attitudes that have caused harm in our relationships. In lament, we are honest with ourselves and with God, and we invite God's transforming love to undo the evils that we have unleashed. In lament, we join ourselves to others who are suffering and pleading for God to make things right. In our gospel reading this morning, 
Some Pharisees are warning Jesus to escape from the evil clutches of Herod Antipas. Jesus has been doing ministry, teaching in the area of Galilee, where this despot has power, and it is well known that he wants to use that. He's got his target set on ending Jesus' life, just as he has already beheaded John the Baptist. But Jesus responds to their warnings, go and tell that fox for me. Basically, he goes on, I've got too much to do to concern myself with his idle threats. We probably don't hear in those words just how strongly Jesus calls out the despicable evil of Herod Antipas. For most of us, a fox just does not represent such reckless evil. For us, a fox is a lovable and elegant creature, and we are more likely to think about how disturbing for example, the traditional British fox hunt is in setting loose a mass of hounds to rip apart that poor, innocent creature. We see the fox as the innocent victim, and we love the Disney movie, don't we, where the fox and the hound become good friends and they put an end to that violence? But at the time that Jesus gave this response, the fox did not have the reputation for being uh, innocent. In fact, it was considered a reckless killing machine on the small-scale agriculture of everyone's livelihood. To call someone a fox was not to say how attractive they were, it was to deeply insult them as a worthless, treacherous, evil nuisance. It was a strong word, making clear Jesus' contempt for the man holding power. In a sense, Jesus was lamenting Herod's petty and reckless evil. The exchange between Jesus and these Pharisees introduces then Jesus' much greater lament. Herod, the evil tyrant, is for Jesus hardly worth mentioning and is labeled dismissively as a fox. What really concerns Jesus and draws out his guttural lament is the evil of Jerusalem in repeatedly turning against the prophets that God had sent them throughout their long history, killing those messengers, stoning them to death, one sent by God. Jesus laments the evil acts that will take place in Jerusalem once again, knowing that he himself will go there to be killed. But listen to his cry of lament over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus is lamenting as God over the city that he loves. He is not just a critic of the politics of the moment. He is speaking from the perspective of watching over the long centuries of Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. And this is God's own cry of sorrow for the countless evils of the very people he has called to be his own, to take shelter in the shadow of his wings. That phrase depicting God as providing shelter in the shadow of his wings, is actually repeated many times in the Old Testament. Jesus is appropriating those words for himself so that he is the one who desires to gather the people under his wings. He is echoing verses like Psalm 17, 8, where the psalmist cries out to God in lament, guard me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. Or like Psalm 57, 1, where again the psalmist pleads, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storms pass by. Jesus is lamenting what Jerusalem will do when it kills him, but he is lamenting it as the God who all along has sought to shelter Jerusalem under his wings and who continues to love Jerusalem. 
He is lamenting as the victim of evil and yet in solidarity with the people who commit that evil. We should hear in this lament the incredible depths of God's forgiving love for our reckless evil and in the solidarity of his own suffering he has answered that prayer of lamentation by acting to rescue us. So let's give thanks to God. Lord, we do praise you for your compassion and your mercy toward us, that you desire to shelter us in the shadow of your wings. In Jesus' words, as a hen would shelter and gather her brood under the shadow of her wings. And so, Lord, we pray this prayer for ourselves in regard to turning away from the evil and pride and selfishness of our lives, but we also pray on behalf of those who are suffering in our world, or right now especially the people of Ukraine. Lord, shelter them under your wings. Keep them safe. Watch over them, we pray. Do not let harm come to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who desires more than we understand to bring us home to you. Amen.